And I will turn my microphone on, too. Good afternoon, everybody. What a weekend we had at our house. But it was good. It's a marvelous day. It's good to be worshiping here today. We had a, we had a full house, but a great weekend. So I hope yours has been great as well. Hope you've had a, a great weekend and you'll continue to have one the rest of it here. We're doing a series called The Christmas Spirit. And we kicked it off last Sunday with the the beginning of Jesus' story, with how it all began for him. His family tree is what we talked about. And if you couldn't make it, I hope you can catch it online. It's there. So, But today is all about journeys. Not journey as in where we're at right now. We're at the journey, but a journey, like you're on a journey. And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, that. Do you ever, you ever travel at Christmas? Uh, did you, have you ever in your lifetime had to, you know, do the traveling thing, you know, over the, over the hills and through the woods and on the on-ramp to the freeway we go, that whole thing? You've had to do that. Growing up, <clears throat> the relatives always came to us. So we were always there. We always got to stay home for Christmas and all the relatives, they traveled from wherever they did and they came to our house. But when I moved out of the house or, or, or even when we got married, we started traveling and, and it became a regular thing. Every single Christmas, we would travel, maybe a day or two before and maybe a day or two after, but sometimes right on Christmas Day, we would travel. And that was a thing. That was our journey. And we still do it sometimes, I guess. Pack up the kids, pack up the gifts, do the whole thing, get it all loaded up, and, and off we go to grandmother's house. And uh, uh, even this year. In fact, Josh was saying we have a... Uh, Christmas Eve service on Saturday, which is going to be awesome. At 5, I'm very much looking forward to it. A lot of involvement. It's going to be great. And then we have our Christmas Day service. So the next day, right away, we have, uh, uh, is Sunday, so we have our Christmas Day service at 4 o'clock like normal. And I hope that you can make it to both of those. It's going to be good. But we probably will pack up our, our family and the kids and do the whole thing. And we'll do service here on Sunday, and oh, right about 5.30, 6 o'clock on Sunday evening, we're going to hit the road, Christmas Day, and go travel to be with family. And, uh, you know, it seems weird to be on the road for Christmas Day, but it shouldn't because we've done it so many times, it's, uh, it just should feel normal. But it's, it's always good to be with family, so looking forward to it. I'm sure you all have your own holiday travel stories, your journeys. In fact, Thursday, that's what we're going to do. Thursday night, you uh, small groupers who are, are come to the Thursday night, that will be our question of the night. We'll talk about your favorite hal- holiday travels. Uh, and if you want to join us Thursday night, that would be awesome. Um, but don't feel too weird because Jesus had to travel on Christmas Day as well. A little bit different for him. We've not played a game in a long time, so I thought it would be good for us to play a game. We're going to play a game called, What Do I Really Know About Christmas? There it is. We're going <laughs> to... I pride myself in naming these games, so just, just appreciate it, okay? So here's how it works. It's pretty simple. Um, there's a multiple guess uh, up there, and you have to guess what it is, and whoever gets the most points gets... A fabulous prize if I can find something. This sheet music right here gets this. No, that's not mine to give. I better not do that. How about we just shake your hand? Yeah, we'll do that. Christmas. Christmas. (laughs) What is it? There you go. (laughs) All right, so here it is, the sample one. Jesus was really born on, which one is it? D is correct. We don't really know. It's not necessarily December 25th. In fact, it's uh, really doubtful that it's actually December 25th. People say it's more likely to have happened in June, but nobody really knows when it was. All right, number one, here we go. This is for the points, okay? Joseph was originally from? A is correct. Bethlehem. I don't know who said it, but you win the, the first point. There you go. All right. It says that in Luke. Number two, what does the innkeeper say to Mary and Joseph? (laughs) 
Um, no, not so much is the answer. I would accept A or E because we actually don't know who said what. We're assuming that the innkeeper told him that there was no room and lodging was very different then. It wasn't really an inn. It's a whole family thing. So no points for you. All right, next one. <laughs> a manger is... Wow, I didn't know I was going to stump you guys. This is fantastic. C is the answer. It's a feeding trough. It's, it's simply that. All right. Number four. How did Mary and Joseph get to Bethlehem? <laughs> I have not heard the right answer. The actual answer is F. Nobody knows. We always see the picture of Mary riding on a donkey, but it doesn't say anywhere in Scripture that Mary rode a donkey. We always see Joseph leading a donkey, but we never, it never says that. So there's a lot of assumptions. Lots of times they traveled that way, so it's, it's, it's highly likely that that happened. Could have been a camel as well, but nobody really knows. All right, next one. How many reindeer are there? I, it wasn't on the nativity scene. <laughs> he says, who knows? <laughs> what is it? All right. This is, this, you should, almost any of you should get this, because I will accept A, B, or D. There was not 11. There was 8. But in the 20th century, of course, they added Rudolph, making it 9. But if you really think about it, oh, no, Olive? All of the under. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I have not heard that one. Very good. And I was thinking that, of course, we don't, if, if you're not talking about the reindeer that Santa has, there's millions in the world or thousands or whatever. So anyway, except any of those, so you all get a point. Ready? What is frankincense? C is correct. It is a precious perfume. All right, moviegoers. Number seven. What is the name of Tiny Tim's father in A Christmas Carol? It is Bob Cratchit. Indeed. All right. Number eight. In the song, traditional song, Go Tell It on the Mountain, what are you supposed to go tell on the mountain? Oh, thank you. <laughs> so we got the answer right. I'm so glad. All right, number nine in Matthew it talks about wise men or magi, and what does that refer to? Yes, that's correct, men who studied the stars. All right, last one. When the angel first told Mary she was going to have a son, she what? How did she respond? She accepted it. She refused it said, why me? <laughs> F is correct. She not only accepted it, I, I think she accepted it very well, uh, but she said, how can this happen? She didn't understand. All right. Sometimes we, uh, I think it's interesting because sometimes we get uh, mixed up ideas about how all of it went down and sometimes we just take some liberties with the story and sometimes we have these assumptions and um, we don't really know a lot about it. In fact, one of the most celebrated stories in scripture, one of the, one of the it probably is the most celebrated story in scripture, is really a very short story. And we only find uh, the heart of it in, in Matthew and in Luke. We only find the story there. There's, there's uh, the prophecy that comes from all of the Old Testament, but it's really a very short story. I recall my dad reading it every single year from Luke 2. He would read the story, and it really wasn't that long, and none of us were paying attention because we could only open gifts after he read the story. That's just how it worked in our house. And so, but uh, down the road... It started, some of it started to, uh, to sink in, and it, uh, it, it's a great story. And like Andrea said, don't miss the story of Christmas this year. 
as we get all tangled up in the different things and in our lives and, and the busyness of Christmas, don't miss the story. So we take liberties, but here's some things that we know to be true, again, from Matthew and Luke. A young Jewish girl named Mary was pregnant, although she was a virgin. And that's a miracle in itself because God planted this child in her. Her uh, fiancé, Joseph, had a dream saying, you know, don't ditch Mary because this is God's doing. This is the child of God. That's the Devon paraphrase, by the way. Don't ditch Mary. Um, Mary and Joseph, at this point of the story, they have been through some things, right? I mean, it's already, they're on their journey, but it's already more of a ride than most of us are, are interested in. The two of them, they have this firm belief in God, and then Joseph is required to go to Bethlehem to register for the census. And this is not great news for them because Bethlehem is about 50 miles away. This is a four-day trip for them. This is not something that's easy. And we don't really know how far along Mary is at this point. I mean, it might be that she was very, very pregnant, and it might be that they went early again. We're not going to guess. We're not going to assume that we know what happened. We will say that I, I can't imagine why they would go months ahead of time because they have their lives. So we can, we can assume that Mary is very pregnant, but really we're very much speculating. They probably camped along the way. We can also assume that they're pretty tired by the time they arrive in Bethlehem. And then they find out whatever the inn is, and we don't really know exactly what that looks like. They find out there's no proper beds for them. They, they, they've traveled this far, and, and they're excited for a rest. And at this point, there's really no proper beds. Can you imagine how tired they are? This is uh, not an easy road for Mary and Joseph. Most scholars say that Mary was about 14 years old when all of this happened. Again, we don't know for sure, but that's pretty typical for a young Jewish girl. And can, you, can you just kind of picture, life is going okay, it's going fine, and then this angel appears and, and tells Mary that her world is going to change in a, in a very major way. And yeah, there's, there's some things, the angel says some encouraging things. You know, your son's going to rule over Israel and it's, it's good. And, and yes, women who were pregnant are going to have a baby, particularly when they had a baby boy, they were, they were honored. But in this case, she wasn't married. So, so this angel is telling her, you're gonna, people are going to look at you funny because you're not married. And that is not the way that it happened in that day. In fact, the reality is most people would think, well, she's kind of a whore. And that's what Mary is going to have to endure for the next nine months as people look at her. She can't really explain this. Who can explain this? And it's challenging. But one of my favorite verses um, is, is in this part of the story, in Luke one twenty eight, Mary responded, after the angel told her all of these things, Mary responded, I'm the Lord's servant. May everything that you've said about me come true. And then the angel left her.
to carry your son. I am waiting in a silent prayer. I am frightened by the load I bear. In a world as cold as stone, must I walk this path alone? Be with me now. Be with me now. Breath of heaven, hold me together. Be forever near me, breath of heaven. Breath of heaven, light in my darkness. As you watch my face, if a wiser one should have had my place, but I offer all I can. For the mercy of your plan, strong help me be help me breath of heaven hold me together be forever near me breath of Breath of heaven, light in my darkness, over me, O oh holiness, for you are holy. Breath of heaven, hold me together, be forever near. Breath of heaven, light in my darkness, over me, O oh holiness, for you are holy. Breath of heaven, breath of heaven. So the question that I want to ask today, as we talk about the journey, where are you on your journey? Maybe we'll come back to that. Think about it as we continue. Jesus had an incredible journey from the family tree. promised by God 
for hundreds of years. And up to this point, people had, had waited and waited and waited. Then finally, he's placed inside of Mary, and he travels for four days, and then born into a smelly, rough, stable. Welcome to earth, Jesus. <laughs> what do you think that was like? As God or, or king uh, of the world, he should, have had, he should have had the very best. He should have had a royal birth with the best of whatever was available, but it was far from that. Then Jesus grew up, lived a sin-free life on earth, and, and when he gets to be 33 years old, it's, it's time. His mission, his purpose. So they, they beat him, and they put him on the cross, and they kill him. And this is the journey of Jesus. That's, that's kind of how it plays out. And of course, it doesn't end there because he rose again. He rose from the dead, and, and, and he sits at the right hand of God. And all this is done so that we might have a relationship with God, so that we don't have to go through the steps that they used to have to go through up to this point when Jesus was born. He went through... Jesus went through a crazy journey, a painful journey, so that we might have a journey. And I believe that we're all on our journey. So where are you at on your journey, your, your faith journey? Maybe some maybe haven't uh, put much thought into this. And I would challenge you today, think about it. Where are you at? Some feel that there's a God, maybe, but it's not necessarily Jesus. Some, maybe you, you, you gave your life to Jesus, but you're not really living as if you did. We could be anywhere on the journey. All of us could be anywhere. And no matter how old we are or how young you are or or no matter if you were raised in a, in a church family, we could be at anywhere in this journey. We could be at this stage or this stage or that stage. It doesn't matter. All of us are on the journey at some point. Maybe you were a, a solid believer, but you don't have any real spiritual habits. Or, or maybe you're doing really well and, and your faith is strong. Maybe that's you. Sometimes I'm, sometimes I'm strong. Sometimes I feel strong, like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And then other times I feel like I'm going backwards on my journey. Like I was so much stronger weeks ago. And it's like two steps forward and one step back. My faith journey looks, looks that way a lot. So what, what is yours? And I would challenge you to ask yourself and be honest with yourself. Your, your faith, if your faith was a journey and, and, and you were honestly uh, on the road somewhere, have you, have you not started? And that's okay. We're not here to judge. Maybe you've just started. Maybe you've just started your faith journey. Or maybe the road has been long and you've traveled a, a long ways, but you're doing well. Or maybe you feel like you're somewhere in the middle. Listen, here's the point. No matter where you are, and, and nobody is here to judge you, take the next step. No matter where you are at in your journey, I would challenge you, take the next step. And if there's anything that we can do as a church, as a family, to help you take that step, we'd love to do that. But you have to decide, where are you at? Paul writes the, a letter to the Romans that includes this encouragement to take the next step. In Hebrews 5, it says this. It says, we have much to say about this. But it's hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you in the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. 
Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teachings about righteousness. But solid food is for the ma- <coughs> mature, who by, const- who, by constant, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Paul could not be more clear. I could be more clear. <laughs> Paul could not be more clear. Take the next step. He wants us to mature. He wants us to grow. He wants that to happen. And he's saying you need to do that. Wherever you're at in your life, in your journey, take the next step. No one is judging you for where you're at. No one really knows where you're at. That's between you and God. But take the next step. And to do that, you have to take an honest look at where you're at. Maybe for you, you need to to start serving others. Or maybe for you, it's the very first step. You don't really have a relationship with God. And I'd love to show you how to do that. Come and visit with me or Chris or Josh. I'd love to show you how that happens. Or maybe you need to start reading your Bible, talking to God. Maybe you need to commit to that. Maybe you've done that a little bit, but you need to make that a more ongoing thing. Take that step. Maybe you need to start giving to your church. Take that step. Maybe you need to make a commitment to attend church on a regular basis. Or or maybe it's small group that you can start growing that way. Take that step. Maybe you're doing all that and you need to ask God, how do I take the next step? What do I need to do so that I might take the next step? For me, it's my desire to have the same attitude that Mary had. I'm the Lord's servant. May whatever you have planned for me be true. I love that she said that. I love that that's a possibility, and that's my goal. That's where I want to be. If I, could, if I could say that and mean it with all of my heart, if I'm doing all that I can do to be who God created me to be, that's the place that I want to be. I have more steps to take. My journey is not complete. Be honest with yourself. Where are you at? It's not a bad thing. It's not a negative thing. But be encouraged. Take the next step. God, thank you for the opportunity to be here today and to worship you and to grow closer to you. And God, I would just pray that as we think about where we're really at on our own journeys, God, give us the strength, give us the courage to take that step. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys, thanks for being a part of the journey today. Have a great day great week. If you told me all about your sorrows, I'd tell you about a cure. If you told me you